Hello everyone, it's Richard here. I've got another quick Master Sport update for you. And before you switch off, this will probably be my last Master Sport update for quite some time. I think now it's released at version 4 and the files are already uh, uploaded, uh, ready for you to download and use. It's got to a good point with manufacturers and users to just let the project sort of carry on by itself now for at least a little while and see what happens. And I also want to get back to normal projects, telling you about all sorts of other designs, developments and projects I've been doing. So they've been stacking up and I've got loads to share with you, including a really cool Valentine's project I did with a whole family. Uh, it's one I'm really excited about. Hopefully we'll give you some really ins inspirational sort of ideas and things you can do with 3D printing, uh, especially to get other people involved, kids, family. And it was a little project we did for um, Valentine. So I'll try and get that uploaded as soon as possible as soon as I finished doing some of the uh, photography and video editing on that. Okay so Master Sport is now issue 4. All the files are up on Umagine and Thingiverse and there's a couple of changes all fed from the community feedback on users using version 2 and version 3 and myself using it as well with the DAS filament coils. So been really great feedback. Thank you ever so much for anyone that's given any feedback at all on this or even that's just pledged an interest in the future. That's been great. So version 4 uh, is a, a lot easier to print now with bigger nozzles. I've got rid of a lot of the text. It doesn't have any gram waiting on for the coils now because the DAS filament coils are bigger than the 750 that I had originally on there. Um, so it's better for bigger nozzles, but it can still be printed with a smaller nozzle. It just is a lot quicker. I've done this on the TAS 6 and the BCN 3D Sigma, both of these two. There's still a place for the sticker, which is great. I've beefed up the plates a little bit, the sort of rigid side of the plates. Now that was um, really to make them a bit stiffer, but also got extra holes and um, other sort of rib ribbing in there to stiffen everything up but also use less filament so it doesn't take any particularly less time to print that bit of it. There's a little bit less time printing on the two vertical sections because there's less material in there in the first place. The other thing we've now got lined up holes so when you screw them together your zip ties can go all the way through one side. There is a tiny lip on the edge on this one that first needs to bite in when you first put it together. So you might have to just give it a little bit of a tight squeeze and then wind it back a little bit. Then it should be stiff for quite a long time. Um, so you can now put your filament, um, your tie wraps all the way through to unwind or unwrap your filament. I'll show you that in a second. We've got um, a few extra enhancements on um, filament storage. So on this side you've now got two filament storage areas on each side and still one on that one. And there's also one for three millimeter filament which you can use on this part A which you now it's intended you poke that through, wrap it round and you just poke it under which means that it will just sit nicely on the, oops, got a dodgy end on this one. All right, there you go. So it will just sit nicely on there and it won't interfere on the surface or on the outer surface so you can stack the coils. That was quite important. There's a little catch on there for three millimeter. So that's quite nice and easy to use. Um, the other thing really, uh, it is a little bit quicker to print but it is designed for chunky nozzles. So hopefully it won't take quite so long as the previous designs. Okay, so that's that side of it. Um, a few other things I just wanted to point out. People have been getting really worried about filament tangles. That's probably the biggest question I get, um, other than what are the dimensions of the refill coils. And in the uh, documents on Umagine and Thingiverse, there's actually a PDF now that explains the dimensions of the refill coil and the dimensions of this reel. If you want to go off and make your own and do other things, that's great. But just um, I just wanted to just spend a tiny bit of time talking about filament in general, how best to to um, be careful with it really because these coils are quite easy to use. They're, you shouldn't be too worried about getting hold of one of these coils, unpacking it, putting it on, taking the tie wraps off and using it and also about taking it back off again. Um, when I changed from the version 2 to the version 3 I didn't have the tie wrap system so I actually had to take the, take the top off and it's fine and there's no tie wraps on there, it's not going to all suddenly fall off all over the place um, and I actually had to then put the new version 3 on and slide them across, um, which wasn't that difficult. I mean, you've got to be a bit careful, but um, it's not it's not that hard to do. So just, you know, these coils are pretty well, pretty well made. They're nice and tight. They're not going to suddenly just all fall apart on you. Um, that said, if you do want to take the coil off, 
halfway through. It is designed so you can now do that and you just pop your tie wrap through. You can use re reusable tie wraps as well, which are, which are ones that uh, obviously you can just pull, push the end and it comes back off again. I'm just going to use normal ones for now just to show you this. So you just poke this through here and poke this through. There you go, you've got your tie wrap on. And poke your other one through. So you can, it's now much easier to just do these. You don't have to slide it down the sides of the filament anymore because the holes in the side makes it a lot easier just to, just to poke these down. So I'm just gonna put two in for now because it really doesn't need a huge amount of, uh, of effort with these ones. So you can take that off, take the little middle clip out and you've got your coil, which I'm just going to push off. This one's nice and tight on here, which is great. Push through. So yeah, now I've only got two tie wraps on there. The coil ends just flapping about a bit. We'll just poke that under there and we'll put that on the other spool that I've got. And we'll go back to full silver this time. So poke that one on push down, there you go, being quite rough with it, you know, it's really not as delicate as a lot of people think, these coils are pretty tough, they're not going to suddenly just unwind all over you, and pop that back on, and there you go, you've reloaded your spool, you can cut your ties, or you can store it, or do whatever you want. So that's the other thing, don't be too worried about um, coils of filament, you know, back in the old days we used to have coils of filament that you can literally just load onto a spool and just use. They will just happily unwind and keep on using for as long as you want. The difficulty is when you let go of the end and they get tangled. Now with a loose spool like this it's not going to cause you any problems at all. The biggest problem is when you've got a spool of filament like so and the end's not been held. So if you ever come if you ever pick up your spool of filament and your end is just left loose like that and it's just got all tangled up the worst thing you can do is just pull the end and start feeding that into your printer because that's when you get tangles. What, what will happen is you'll have let this go and it'll go underneath one of the other coils or underneath another coil and come out like that and produce a knot and eventually that will tighten and tighten and tighten until it gets to the point where this happens and it will just tighten into a knot and then get jammed. And I've seen customers um, of, of 3D printing filament manufacturers swear blind that they got their reel with a knot in um, and that they shouldn't be supplying reels with knots and all sorts of things. Um, I guarantee you, you haven't had a reel with a knot in it. It's impossible for the filament manufacturers to spool a knot into it. It just doesn't work. It's just when you let go of that end and then you don't bother to look to see if it's tangled up. What I always do, if there's ever a loose end, I just take all of the coils off that are loose, just take the whole, whole lot off because then you know you're back to filament that isn't tangled. You have to wind that back on but at least you know that you're not going to have tangled filament and that's just a really important tip that don't blame your coil, your filament manufacturers if you end up with with tangled reels of filament because it's just because it's got tangled under it when you haven't been managing the end of your coil. So the best thing you can do with this and with master spool when you get to the end of your end of your coil is to secure it firmly in one of the coil holders. Now and here there's just a hole on master spool. You've got the you've got the side tie wrap, side wraps you can push in the ends or you can just poke the filament through. And there's plenty of other holes in there as well. So please do that. The other thing we've been we've been dealing with things like big coils for a long time. These are Fabadashri coils and they will again just sit nicely on there and they'll just reel and unwind and they really won't cause you too many problems so big coils like this much less of an issue tight little coils like this okay as long as it's not fixed at one end if the whole thing can just turn around that's okay coils that have got knots in well you just need to be really careful about those so I just wanted to just sort of go over that because that seems to be the biggest paranoia about um, using uh, 
cartridge, sort of a, a filament based uh, refill system that people are going to suddenly end up having tangles and coils on their coils and it's just not not true really you just need to be careful with any type of filament uh, reels that you've got so anyway I've waffled on a bit but I just wanted to get that point across the other thing I really wanted to say is great to see lots and lots more people um, cutting up spools, doing things, making their own master spool system, that's all fantastic. The the point I was sort of trying to keep with master spool is to make that 50 millimeter um, hole, the 52 millimeter mounting hole, because all of my machines and everything I've ever done has always had that spool system. And that provides just enough resistance on a spool to stop them freewheeling too much. And again, you don't want bearing spool mounts and things that can freewheel and run because your filament will tend to spin off a little bit too too violently so there's a very good reason why I wanted to keep that 52 mil mount but people that are recycling by putting inserts into the spools brilliant absolutely love that if that works for you and you can work with a smaller hole in the middle and your mounting system works that's brilliant I also noticed some of the other reels I've been looking at other plastic reels this is one from um, Exclaman the Chinese manufacturer and actually I noticed that some of these just pop out which is really great They've actually got three little clips on the sides that you could actually print out a new middle section and pop these two sides off and use that as a master spool. It's a little bit tricky to have to keep popping it on and off every time. But again, there's systems out there that are already partial, partial spool systems. They're not a single solid spool. They do come in separate parts. I think Joseph uh, Bruce is another one that uh, I've noticed that has got some type of clip and a sort of a, a, a different colored plastic pipe in the middle of it so you could probably pop these ends off you know it's up to you to decide what to do I looked at all different ways of, uh, of doing this originally but like I say the original sort of idea with masterful was to make it as as generic as spool as possible so it would actually work on as many 3d printers and mounting systems that are already out there saying that the version 4 also has flat sides now so if you do have bearing roller mounts it will run really nicely on the bearings um, that was a design change from version 3 that had rounded edges so I've I've cut down on the rounded edges because it actually speeds up print time a little bit um, that's it really I just wanted to give you a bit of an update like I say thank ever so much for all of your feedback on Twitter blogs um, the videos on YouTube and just every other social media and everything that everyone that's contacted me it's been really great to hear from manufacturers users and, uh, and everyone in the community really. So I'm gonna give it a bit of a break for now, see how it all goes and I'll report back probably in the future just to see whether or not the system has risen up or whether it's died away. <laughs> okay, so back to normal scheduling and uh, I'll try and get another video up for you very shortly. Thanks ever so much for watching. I'll see you again next time. really interesting stuff I did for Halloween hmm. not Halloween Valentine's Day not Halloween Daddy, you gonna shoot it and say how to untangle it yeah that's gonna be my filament tangling thing